Welcome, foolish mortals, to Auto Chatter. Today's episode is about the vehicles that will no longer be with us after the 2023 model year in the U.S. Some are long-running nameplates that will be missed. Others you may have thought were already dearly departed. And some may not actually be gone, but resurrected with a new name. Last year, I did not have a list. But we lost several automotive souls such as the Acura NSX, Toyota Avalon, Nissan Rogue Sport, Buick Encore, Volkswagen Passat, Ford GT, and more. So let's pour one out for these soon to be departed vehicles in 2023. As your automotive host and it's October, let's get a little spooky with it shall we? If you want a new one of any of these, it's best you start shopping now before the coffin closes for good, if it's not already too late. We lose two models from Audi that have been here for some time. The first is the Audi TT and has been here for 25 years. This sporty car has been VW Golf based in all three generations that it's been available and has generally shared powertrains as well. TTs were either front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. Manual transmission versions are already in the graveyard and have been there for some time. They never sold like Toyota Camrys and even a more decent year for uh, TTs recently in 2016 barely moved 3,000 of them in the US. Sales for the last four years combined haven't hit that same number so it's not really shocking to see it go. The other Audi well, after 16 years on the market and two generations, Iron Man's car of choice is soon to be no more and will be joining Tony Stark in the hereafter. We will soon say goodbye to the Audi R8. Audi's supercar goes out with a bang as only 150 or so were brought here in 2023. It's a special edition rear-wheel drive V10 powered model with 602 horsepower. MSRP is about a quarter million dollars, but you can't take it with you, right? R8s are obviously not regular cars, so sales numbers were never huge, but they did break the 1,000 sales barrier here in 2011. Goodbye to these two sporty Audis, and honestly, I thought the TT was already swimming with the fishes. You both will be missed. Chevy dispatches two cars and one trim level on another for 2023 that's already on life support. The first one is the Balt EV. This small electric vehicle was originally developed by GM Korea, formerly known as Daewoo. Remember those frightening junk piles? This affordable EV received a lot of praise when launched for the 2017 model year. Unfortunately, it also got a lot of bad press when a recall notice came out that fully charging the batteries on one posed a fire risk that could be hazardous to your well-being. The factory that produces the Bolt is supposed to switch to Chevy Silverado and GMC Sierra EV trucks for 2024. Bolt sales were best here its first year in 2017 with about 23,000 sold. They hovered in the mid to high teens before hitting over 20,000 in sales again in 2020. 2022 dropped to 11,000 in sales and 23 may beat it by a thousand units or so. It will be remembered as being an affordable EV with a potentially fatal reputation. The other vehicle put out to pasture is the slightly larger Bolt EUV that just arrived for the 2022 model year. It shares its electric powertrain and platform with its soon to be deceased smaller brother. Sales on this short lived vehicle has been better than the uh, Bolt EV with over 27,000 of them sold for 2022 and 2023 has beat the 21,000 barrier as of this writing. Do only the good die young or are EV full-size trucks just more profitable to build and sell? The final Chevy to chat about would be the four-cylinder turbo Camaro. It's gone after 2023, 
leaving the V6 as the new base model. If I do another video like this next year, the Camaro itself is slated to not be long for this world after 2024 or possibly 2025. If you're a Transformers fan, you might want to shop early for the best selection. Over in Chrysler land, we lose four long-running nameplates. The Chrysler 300, Dodge Charger, and Challenger all depart after 2023. Feel free to leave your condolences in the comments section during or after this open casket viewing. These vehicles that vary widely from rental car mild to monstrous beasts have certainly been fan favorites. They also had a long lost brother who resembled a hearse named Magnum that left us ages ago. The final Challenger SRT Demon has 1,025 horsepower and hits 60 in 1.66 seconds. As Ash from the Evil Dead movies famously said, Groovy. What's also sad is another manual transmission car bites the dust with the Challenger gone, and three more new rear-wheel drive cars will no longer be available, except in our memories. These three similar vehicles under the skin are old though, as the platform they use is a Mercedes one that the Germans themselves haven't since 2009. The trio will be pushing up the daisies in favor of future electric vehicles. A Charger concept has been shown that promises all the Hemi fun and maybe more, but no longer necessarily needing gasoline. The Chrysler 300 has been at death's door having had a large drop in sales the last five years or so. But the other two managed to remain pretty consistent since they launched. Of all the cars on this year's list, I'm sure the loss of these Hemi-powered brutes will be missed a lot. The Jeep Cherokee has also gave up the ghost after 2023. It's been a crossover since returning to the Jeep lineup for 2014, replacing the Liberty which was the vehicle the legendary XJ Cherokee from the 1980s and 90s was replaced by, and I've done a video on them here. Please watch and reminisce about happier Cherokee times. Current ones are based off the Fiat platform the ill-fated Chrysler 200 and Dodge Dart also shared and are front-wheel drive based. This Cherokee was a hit when it launched and even broke the 239,000 sales barrier by 2018, but was down to only 40,000 or so by 2022. Once it expires, no direct replacement has been shared with the land of the living yet as of this writing. Ferrari bids a Riverderci to two cars for 2023, although one is barely worth mentioning. That would be the F8 Tributo, as only one has officially been imported to the US this year. But you can buy a 2024 F8 Spider. that's basically a convertible version of it with the same 710 horsepower power plant. It's around $320,000 to start, which could buy you a lot of burial plots. The other Ferrari is the Portofino M, that's been replaced by the Roma Spider. The new car is more powerful with 612 horsepower and has a cloth top as opposed to an heavier convertible hard top one. So it's not so much a car gone as it is a redesign and a new name. No chilling tales of terror from Ferrari this year. Ford loses a middle child SUV after 2023 as the Ford Edge is on its last year. There's been two generations of it since 2007 here, where the first one was built off a modified Mazda 6 platform. Sales of the Edge have been fairly good over the years, starting in the 130,000 range for 2007 and hit an all-time high in 2017, with over 142,000 leaving Ford dealerships. Reasons for its departure seem to revolve around a labor dispute at the Canadian plant where they are built, and the same factory will be transitioning to future Ford EV vehicles. 
the dreaded black cat disguised as an electric vehicle has struck again. The Ford Transit Connect expires after 2023 here too. This smaller van or boxy utility vehicle is kind of like the recently departed Nissan NV200. It's a Ford of Europe vehicle that's been imported here since 2010. Ford ducked out of the 25% chicken tax on imported trucks with these by shipping them here with back seats installed and then removing them on arrival if it was destined to be a cargo version. Back seats signified it wasn't a truck according to the rule books. This vehicle was replaced in Europe recently with the Ford Tornillo, which is a rebadged Volkswagen Caddy and built in Poland. The small van segment in the US has kicked the bucket, leaving Ford to not bother having an offering in this class any longer. Hyundai's luxury brand Genesis has a sports sedan called the G70. It's only been here since 2019 and has the choice of a 2 liter 4 cylinder turbo with 252 horsepower or a twin turbo 3.3 liter V6 with 365. Drivetrain options are rear wheel drive or all wheel drive with either. A manual transmission was an option on four cylinders, but unfortunately was dropped after the 2022 model year. Poor sales is being blamed for its demise, as everyone wants a crossover nowadays. I sympathize as shovels and a body bag do fit in the back of a crossover easier. Since launching here, sales have hovered in the 10 to 12,000 range annually. Its platform mate, the Kia Stinger, first arrived a model year earlier in 2018 with basically the same powertrains. It has sold a little better in the US, with close to 17,000 selling its first year and moving about 13,000 of them annually after that until 2022 dropping to 8,000 or so. Unfortunately, the sales numbers are not enough to develop a second gen at this point, so they await the guillotine. The all-electric Kia EV6 GT is positioned as Kia's new performance flagship. These Genesis and Kia cousins were interesting options for us, and it's sad to see them depart so soon. Kia has another fallen comrade to discuss as well, and it's actually a long-running one in the US. The Rio is gone here after 2023. It's been Kia's entry-level car here since debuting for the 2001 model year. Later versions of the car were related to the Hyundai Accent that perished in the US in 2022. With the Rio's eternal absence next year, that leaves only two entry-level cars under 20,000 with the Mitsubishi Mirage and Nissan Versa starting in the 17,000 range. The Mirage may very well expire after 2024 and the Versa could see its obituary a year later. Mazda has two cadavers after 2023. Well, really just one technically. The CX-9 has been Mazda's largest crossover option here since the 2007 model year. The original ones were designed with Ford and even had drivetrains made by them. This was when Ford still owned a portion of Mazda and the first gen CX-9 was related to the Ford Edge which by coincidence also went away this year. These Mazda and Ford Frankensteins over the years was a long-standing tradition at one point, and some good vehicles from both brands were created from it. The V6 and the CX-9 was changed to a Mazda-built one later on in its run. Second-gen CX-9s was all Mazda, and had a turbocharged 2.5-liter four-cylinder standard with 250 horsepower more than enough to lug this sporty three-row crossover around to the morgue or wherever else you might need to go. Sales on CX-9 have been fairly good to Mazda and the last few years have been its best with sales close to 35,000 annually. The CX-9 isn't really dead though as its replacement is the CX-90. This all-new all-wheel drive crossover that's larger, more upscale and has a turbocharged inline six-cylinder 
with up to 340 horsepower or so if you opt for the mild hybrid one. So in reality, Mazda's largest crossover offering is very much alive and kicking. The Mazda that is deceased for 2023 though is the MX-30. This is Mazda's first EV here and only sold in California. With only 100 miles of range, which is beyond terrible for the 2020s, it's not really surprising why it's dead on arrival. The MX-30's best year was 2022 with only 324 sold to people who likely don't drive anywhere far. Mercedes seems to be quite the serial killer for 2023. Last year they turned the front wheel drive A-Class to ash and now there's several other four-wheeled souls going away too. The slightly larger C-Class coupes and convertibles are supposed to bow out, leaving just the sedan to carry on in grief. The E-Class based CLS executive car is also about to lose its pulse. Other E-Class vehicles departing soon is the coupe and convertible versions. So if you want a two-door Mercedes, your only option soon will be the all-new AMG GT that will start around 150000 and go north of 200000 depending on options and trim. Mercedes also is killing off the Metris minivan for our market. This expensive for what you get vehicle was an odd choice in non-commercial trims as it lacks so many features buyers expected in minivans for years, or decades in some cases. To make it worse, a turbocharged four-cylinder with only 208 horsepower might have been considered good in the 1990s, but that's beyond pathetic today. The commercial gas-powered version called a Sprinter also expires soon. This one hurts a bit, having owned one years ago, but the Nissan Maxima will no longer be with us after 2023. It's been around since 1981 as a fancier Datsun 810 trim at first, and they made some pretty interesting Maxima models over the years. The sedan was often considered a sporty choice versus competitors and held out offering a manual longer than many too. I've already made a video on the Maxima's life and you can click here to see it. It was last redesigned for 2016 and horsepower hit 300 for the final act. Unfortunately, the Maxima fell victim to buyers moving towards crossovers versus the once red-hot mid-sized sedan market. Many of its competitors have already gone to that great parking lot in the sky like the Chevy Impala, Ford Taurus, and Toyota Avalon. The Altima carries on the larger sedan torch for Nissan, but it too may not survive past 2025 if some articles I've read lately become true. Rumors of an all-electric Maxima in the future are floating around as well like a restless spirit. It would be a shame to let this long-running nameplate die for good. Rest in peace, four-door sports car. Well, I think I got them all. I thought about mentioning the McLaren II with the 720S, but the replacement is a 750S, so it's more a redesign with a different name. But this is my list, and I hope you found it informative and interesting. Please don't hesitate to let me know if I missed any, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Hope you have a happy fall and Halloween. Until next time, chatter out.